Hi, Mario here. First, I want to thank my patrons for making my work possible. Welcome to my new video about ancient civilizations and the subject of the expanding Earth. This video is divided into three different levels of difficulty for the different levels of patronage. In the first level or chapter, I explain the basics of our most recent insights as to how catastrophic expansion relates to ancient civilizations, crustal deformations and the subsequent catastrophes. This is the main reason why ancient structures in the Americas are oriented the way they are, namely to ancient geographic poles. And we have succeeded in dating the major structures of these lost civilizations. Our time frames are surprisingly different from the official time frames handed down by the academia. To give you an idea, our research has demonstrated six time frames of ancient civilizations covering more than 400,000 years. The pyramids of Giza, for example, are a magnificent achievement of the most recent lost civilization. We estimate these structures to be approximately 15,000 years old. Why the civilization disappeared is a whole other topic that we have covered extensively in other videos, the ones dealing with the so-called yugas. Now let's deal with the main topic of this video. We have profound answers to the question, why did the Mayans and Aztecs have a 260 day calendar? However, did you know that the Incas used a 320 day calendar? And why did Romulus, the founder of ancient Rome, use a year of 304 days? Is it possible that the years were shorter during ancient times because the earth was perhaps smaller? and it probably rotated faster around its axis and had a faster helical orbit around the Sun. This is a stunning idea that leads to astounding insights. Yes, we think that this is the correct answer because we think that the expanding Earth is much younger than we initially thought. The expansion events of the Earth were very catastrophic to ancient civilizations that were already living on the surface of the Earth. Over the years of our research, we found many clues to how old the expanding Earth is in reality. Why are other expansionists dead wrong in their assumed time frames of tens of millions of years? Because they use wrong data. You cannot use the data of the academia who deny expansions for dating purposes. This is probably difficult to understand. We will cover this in future videos. So this data is by definition wrong. With the ancient calendar system of the Mayans, supported by our profoundly different dating methods of ancient structures, we have been able to find better answers regarding the true time frames of the expanding Earth. We have been contemplating the following possibility. Geology insists to stretch their time frame of geological changes over tens of millions of years, while archaeology compresses the time frame of human history into a mere few thousand years. There is a huge gap here and we think that this gap of reasoning hides an enormous secret and an as yet unsolved mystery. This mysterious reasoning gap between 10,000 years and about 1 million years has seemingly nothing in between except some monkey-like creatures walking in bear skins that they call Neanderthals. We think that our true history has been distorted and cloaked by the strange difference in timelines of geology and archaeology. Both disciplines sacredly believe that they are doing great scientific work at the best level they can, but we think they are deluding themselves by following a false path of reasoning. If you extend the archaeological timeline and compress the geological timeline, the magnificent truth starts to reveal itself. We think that there is a hidden timeline in the middle. The scientists who live in two different thought biospheres of discrepancy are unaware of what they have done. But is this necessary to hide our true origin from us? The majority of people who have put their whole belief system into the hands of science are indoctrinated with a false belief system. Do we have to merge these two time frames to find the ultimate truth? Yes, I think we have to. And we have found proof for this hypothesis on multiple levels. Are these two meaningless science timelines 
between brackets, deliberately presented to hide the truth about our overlords, the so-called Anunnaki, to hide our true ancestry as best as possible. Yes, I think that this is also the case. This knowledge is very important to better understand our true ancient history and to understand who and what we are, namely divine beings with divine capacities. We also think part of our divine capacities come from Earth's original inhabitants, such as the Neanderthals, a species whose DNA still runs in our blood. They are not the beast as depicted by science, no, they seem to have been the divine superior beings that originally lived on Earth. The Anunnaki, the beings from the sky, created a hybrid species from their own DNA and mixed it with that of the Neanderthals, and maybe some other species as well. I think the part that ultimately resists oppression is the DNA of the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals did not become extinct by themselves, they were eliminated by the Anunnaki to cut us off as much as possible from our original ancestry. Manipulation, especially by mind control, is the main goal. This is a serious possibility that we have been pondering and we have found more astounding clues, namely the truth behind the 260 days Mayan calendar. Historians and Wikipedians vaguely explain this calendar as something for definition purposes, to foretell lucky and unlucky days. This is a stupid explanation. Again, typical illogical explanation by historians that springs directly from their weird imagination. It is easy to say that they were sort of sacred calendar system without proposing any further explanation. Case closed. Period. We try to look at this question from several perspectives and we have found several possible answers. The rotation of the Earth and the orbit of the Earth around the Sun comply with the law of conservation of energy. By extension, if the Earth was smaller in diameter, it had less gravity and spun faster around its axis. It also means that the Earth orbited faster around the Sun. The fact that not one, but all ancient civilizations used shorter calendars should ring all bells of logic, because it shows a pattern, a consistent pattern of years getting longer when ancient civilizations get younger. This observation supports our hypothesis in such a way that the probability that this is factual exceeds 99.5%. Was Romulus' calendar of 304 days still a heritage of ancient knowledge which he ignorantly reused, or is it a fact today's Earth rotated slower in his days? Maybe we don't know the answer to this question, to this specific question. We have proven with our analytical method that most of the megalithic ancient monuments were constructed hundreds of thousands of years ago. What separates us from our very ancient ancestors is not only an ocean of time, but also a series of massive, long-lasting cataclysms. Our collective ancient memories are buried in the mist of time. Many of the megalithic leftovers from ancient civilizations hint at a high level of sophistication. These cultures thrived on our planet before massive, ravaging cataclysms threw them back into one of the many Stone Ages. Is it possible that the Mayans, the Aztec and the Incas lived at a time when one Earth year had less than 365 days? Was it a smaller Earth with less gravity? This could explain the Ica stones and the Ancambaro figurines. This could also explain cases like the Paluxy River Paradox, where a man's footprints are footprints of dinosaurs. Also explains why soft tissue is found in dinosaur bones. Science twists itself into all sorts of convoluted turns to explain all these cases. Typifying them as hoaxes is very popular because it takes little thought energy to label them and to store them away in the corners of pseudoscience. Is it conceivable that our true ancient history is completely different? Yes, we think it is, and we have mathematical science as our backup. You probably heard of the mainstream idea called Pangaea, 
Pangaea was believed to be a supercontinent. The initial evidence for that is the near perfect fit between several continents like Africa and South America. Final evidence was found on the seabed when points of identical age are connected using what is called isochrons. However, there is a problem with this hypothesis. The isochrons are considered the final proof, the ultimate mechanism to explain continents drifting apart. However, with the Earth having the same diameter, there is an insuperable problem on the other side of the globe for the Pacific Ocean must have expanded in size. But here we find the same isochronic pattern as in the Atlantic, so the Pacific must have been smaller as well. Otherwise this then immediately disproves the idea that Atlantic is expanded, unless the diameter of the Earth was smaller. This in fact is the only solution, and not somewhat smaller, no, initially half the size. With about 12 to 15 percent of the gravity we have today, this is the only reasonable solution. And this solves many of the big questions, but also raises a new question. Where is the mass coming from? We have solved this question too. We will soon publish on this topic. We do not only question the official Pangaea theory, we also question the official time frames of the isochrons. And why is that? Because the time frames are constructed from the magnetic reversal patterns. And when crustal deformations and expansions are neglected in the magnetic reversal patterns, the timing of the magnetic reversal patterns itself is incorrect. It's like a domino effect. The whole paradigm collapses when only one of the pillars falls. That could mean that a series of events, such as expansion, cataclysms, migration of the geopole, happened, geologically speaking, in the blink of an eye over the last one million years. It is easy to let dinosaurs walk in our today's gravity like in Hollywood movies. The truth, however, is somewhat different. In today's gravity, a dinosaur walking around would collapse under its own weight. Hollywood lets them walk in our gravity and has convinced us to believe very unlikely things. The fact is that dinosaurs lived at a time when gravity was much lower, when the Earth was smaller and the years were shorter. It seems indeed possible that humans and dinosaurs were contemporaries in the not so distant past. The law of conservation of energy gives us clues on how to reconstruct possible ancient orbital data. If the Earth was smaller and lighter in the ancient past, it would be orbiting faster around the Sun, making the year shorter. It would also spin faster, making days shorter. This would explain why ancient calendars had fewer days. During the Mayan era, the Earth looked quite different. One Mayan day had a duration of 21.3 hours. The calculations are shown here. Earth's angular momentum around the Sun is an enormously large number. A year of 260 days duration results in an Earth mass of 78.7% of what it is today, so about 80%. That would mean that everything was lighter in the days of the Mayans about 20% lighter. The angular momentum around the Sun remained the same as a result of the law of conservation of energy, which follows from the combination of mass and time of orbit. And this would explain why tales of giants were probably not fictional but real. Our definition of time on Earth is fully derived from the rotation and orbit, but if that in ancient times was different, then it is meaningless to look at ancient calendars without understanding what actually happened. Time had a total other meaning than today. No one seems to know where the second comes from. It seems to have some origins in Mesopotamia, but no one knows for sure exactly. While the minute means something like very small, minute. Fascinating during our research is also the discovery that the Earth had a total other orbit around the Sun. We made all sorts of calculations to understand what happened. And for good reasons we have to keep out everything involving time, because time like seconds had no meaning in other eras. Years were shorter, days were shorter, what was their minute and what was their second? Second is not even well defined in science, while the whole scientific paradigm hangs on the second, and that is strange. There is now a whole other paradigm possible to study the Mayan calendars with this knowledge in mind, and we can now really try to understand the Mayan calendars. They had a whole other time frame skill. We also made another discovery. The Earth must initially have orbited closer to Venus. It may even be so that Venus and Earth were initially formed from one larger planet 
that was split in two by a massive impact. That would explain why they have similar densities. Venus must have been in ancient time a large moon in the sky, about four times as large as today. While Earth started to grow because of its inner dynamo, it moved away from Venus closer to Mars. An insane idea that directly follows from our calculations. The time frames that we have connected to ancient Mayas and Incas are between 350,000 and 270,000 years ago. That is a vastly different time frame than the current geological one. And also a vastly different time frame than the current archaeological one. We are finding more and more compelling evidence that the Earth has expanded significantly over a much shorter time interval. The expansion could be cyclic, meaning that there could be periods of tranquility and periods of instability. We are today living in a tranquil period. When we look around and measure our world, we see no direct evidence of such expansion. We cannot even imagine such an endless period of turmoil. However, the next expansion cycle is lurking under our feet and because the latest series of expansion cycles took tens of thousands of years, this next cataclysmic period might also take tens of thousands of years of catastrophic activity and turmoil. Because the skin of the Earth stretches with the South Pole, metaphorically speaking, as the eye of the storm, the geographic north will eventually start to migrate. From the pattern that we have witnessed over the last 500,000 years, we can safely say that the geographic North Pole will move towards Russia. Russia's climate will become colder and will probably develop a massive ice sheet on its territory. There's no need to prepare for this event because it is pointless considering the future time frame and the massiveness of this event. In our analysis and documented facts, we have significantly expanded the archaeological time frame and at the same time we have reduced the geological time frame significantly. What we now see is that patterns start to emerge in our findings and we start to see more and more meaning and sense. How could a dinosaur have lived in today's gravity? It didn't. Dinosaurs lived when gravity was much less than today. It is said that dinosaurs lived until 65 million years ago and they died from the effects of a meteor strike. Because 65 million years ago there were no humans on Earth. We seriously considered the possibility that humans and dinosaurs indeed walked together not so long ago. And we think that dinosaurs probably became extinct because of increasing gravity. And we seriously propose that a constantly expanding Earth is an indisputable fact as long as Earth has an inner dynamo and that the time frames of the most recent expansions of the Earth are much shorter than we are currently taught by science to believe. Science between brackets. We will publish much more on this topic, but we need time to think and to work out newer models for the expanding Earth to study the patterns that we see and to incorporate them into our newer models. I hope you enjoyed this video and please, if you have questions, let me know. Thank you for watching.